increasing your pull-up can be a big deal, both repetitions and just being able to do more pull-ups with weight attached. It's a big deal. A lot of folks want to know how to be able to do more pull-ups or to get better at one arming their pull-up. And we have some simple tips. We have eight tips for you today, eight improvement tips that you can use ASAP to improve your ability to do pull-ups. So first is to standardize your technique uh, one of the things I, I suppose I'm not a big fan of is when people are very serious about increasing their pull-up ability and the way they'll set up for pull-ups is they'll jump and grab the pull-up handle and start going. Uh, where you put your hands when you jump is going to vary considerably, making every single set for pull-ups slightly different. And that doesn't allow your body to really um, Im improve or sort of impose its motor learning effect on the ability to do a pull-up, if you standardize everything, putting your you know, pinkies and hands in the same place every time, wrapping or unwrapping your thumbs, doing the same range of motion, preferably for a deep stretch and all the way up to at least the chin, then you start to do that sort of pull-up over and over and over and over and over. And yes, while your ability to do pull-ups is in large margin determined by your general pulling strength and how much you weigh, a big part of being able to do pull-ups is just the neural efficiency in the technique of doing pull-ups. And your body gets really, really good at stuff you practice all the time. So if you practice the same way or a very similar way over and over and over and over, you standardize your pull-up technique, that can make you really, really good at doing that technique. And since that technique is a pull-up, you'll be getting better at pull-ups, being able to do more max weight or maximum reps. So that's number one. Next, you want to spend time in the target rep range for doing pull-ups. This is a short-term strategy that works for a few months. Eventually, more advanced stuff will have to be imposed, but we'll do that video next week. But a lot of folks, you know, if they want to improve how many pull-ups they can do for reps, you'll see them doing some interesting stuff as far as repetitions. Train in the rep range you want to improve. So if it's maximum number of pull-ups that you want, at least in the short term, do slightly weighted 5 or 10 pounds on the belt or unweighted or barely assisted pull-ups, stay close to your body weight and do rep sets close to failure to be able to good at for, uh, get good at, for example, sets of 10. If your pull-up is around 10 reps max, you want to be, be able to be good in that rep range and training that rep range all the time is the best. If you train, for example, with a huge amount of weight and do sets of three to six repetitions, that will make you very strong in the pull-up. But if you transition to taking that weight off and seeing how many pull-ups you can get maximum, which is sort of what you were going for all along, there's going to be a weird transitional time where you're doing reps and your your body English is different because the weight doesn't pull you the same. Your legs start moving a lot. It's, it's a strange thing. You might sort of get tired and crampy earlier, even though you feel like you have a lot of strength. So train in the rep range you want, at least for a few weeks, then you, I promise you'll have a better result. If you want the best 1RM in the pull-up, basic strength is where to train, and that's sets of three to six repetitions with progressively more weight. Eventually, you do some doubles and singles, uh, take a little easy workout, and then try to do the biggest pull-up 1RM that you can after that. Next, and this is a big deal, do pull-ups more often if you really want to get good at pull-ups, even if not all of the workouts are super hard. For example, you could have a situation where you have three workouts per week in which you train pull-ups. One of the workouts can be relatively heavy with some assistance, uh, or sorry, the opposite of assistance, a uh, weight that you hang off of yourself with some pull-ups after with no weight. Another workout, maybe that could be Monday. Wednesday could be you do lots of pull-ups with no weight and then assisted pull-ups. So they're actually lighter than normal, get extra high volume, and that's really good. And then Friday, you think to yourself, okay, if I do another hard pulling workout with lots of pull-ups, it'll fry me, it'll be too much. But hold on a sec, you might not have to do that. You might be able to do a workout based mostly in rows or some other parts of your back that don't really overdo the pull-up movement, but you might take either at the end of the workout or at the beginning or somewhere in the middle, probably beginning or end, my preferences for the beginning, is to do just a couple of sets of two or three repetitions in the pull-ups. Let's say you're able to do 10 to 15 pull-ups. On that Friday, a couple of sets of two to three reps in the pull-up can allow you, while focusing, by the way, on a ton of awesome technique, that can allow you to get one more technical practice session. We're sort of treating the pull-up like a power lift, like you would do a very light deadlift to practice the technique of the deadlift, even though you can't do more heavy deads because it fatigues you too much. The same principle applies to pull-ups. A lot of people, the way they get good at pull-ups is they just do pull-ups like five days a week or something. 
that could be a really good way to do it. It could be a bit overkill. It could be suboptimal. But what they're getting right, at least in that part, is they practice, practice, practice doing the pull-up. What I don't want you guys to do is really, really give a shit about how many pull-ups you can do and then do one time a week you have pull-ups in your workout. And even though you can do sets of 10 to 15, no problem. I understand that if you can only do one or two pull-ups, maybe that max effort is really only for one day of the week. But if you can do good sets of pull-ups, but you're only doing them on one day and you have several, well, you have six other days of the week, let's say we take a day off, five other training days potentially in which you can do pull-ups, at least in a few of them, you should do some serious pulling. And maybe in one of those, when it's too much and it's too much, too much volume to do a lot of really high effort pull-ups, maybe you can do a couple of doubles in pull-ups just to be able to get a little bit more time spending ingraining that pull-up technique. And then all of a sudden, you're just really, really, really good at pull-ups. Sort of similar how if you watch a um, person who's really good at calisthenics, the way they do pull-ups, man, it just looks so beautiful. I'm like, how... Every part of your technique, it seems like you've been doing that for a long time. I like, well, yeah, I do. I do this all the time. And that's how you get good at something. I don't want you guys to just basically never do it and then be like, oh, how come I only train pull-ups once a week and I'm not that good at them? Well, you know, it kind of answers the question. Next, doing the right accessories. Yes, if you can do sets of five, especially 10, especially 15 with pull-ups, you can kind of just do pull-ups, the, the jail yard workout, you know? Two sets of pull-ups, two sets of try not to get stabbed, two sets of joining one of the racial gangs. Eh, eh, I would say which ones, but I'll probably get canceled for that. In any case, try join one in of a race you don't belong to. Eh, mix it up a little. In any case. So, yes, it's possible if you can do lots of pull-ups or if your joints are super good at handling that sort of stress, that you can just do mostly pull-ups, a bit of assistance work, and maybe not even, and just get really awesome. The reality is different. It's unlikely that someone who wanted the biggest squat would only squat. It, this is true for all sports, by the way. No sport that I know of trains the sport exclusively by playing the sport. And if the sport is pull-ups, then why would you only do pull-ups? There are intelligent assistance exercises you can do that help you on your way. They include assisted pull-ups because you can do higher repetitions and really focus on technique better. Weighted pull-ups which allow you to load the pull-up much heavier. And thus, there's a kind of two benefits. One, the overall strength of the pull-up goes up. And two, there's an insane potentiation effect that after you are used to doing pull-ups with weight hanging, when you take the weight off, even though you're fatigued, and of course, if you do taking the weight off a few days later when you've healed, just doing your own body feels insanely easier and yes, there is a performance enhancement, but there's also a mega confidence enhancement, which can be a big, big fucking deal, right? Pull downs, rows, bicep curls, hammer curls, would having bigger biceps make you better at pull ups? Of course, it's part of the movement, right? It's part of the movement. Would being able to hammer curl a lot or lots of for sets of 10 be able to get you to pull more? Well, yeah, of course, right? So how do you know that from pull downs or sorry, how do you know that from your pull ups alone, you're getting enough bicep volume or enough brack volume? Well, you might not be. And extra volume through those assistance exercises can really fill in the gaps and make you better. So when you're looking at improving your pull ups, think a little bit more big picture and not I'm only going to do pull ups, even if your favorite calisthenics folks just do pull ups. In the coming years, the you know, over over time, as the calisthenics community moves up in its scientific literacy, which all communities are, bodybuilding is like dead last on that one, um, you'll see more folks using some intelligent assistance work, and you'll see more folks, when they have access to it, using uh, weighted equipment, you know, because if you can do 10 pull-ups with 25 pounds hanging, they ain't shit you can't do with your own body weight, right? It's so really, really good stuff. Next, you want to progress on the rep style, now this is real advanced for people getting really strong at pull-ups. But if you just have the calisthenic setup, like creepy Soviet era, mostly abandoned Ukrainian playground where I guess maybe all the best calisthenics people in the world come from or some, you know, like weird Chinese half-constructed mega city playground with no one's around. You guys know what I'm talking about. Those YouTube videos, right? Did you parkour? And you're like, where the fuck does that guy live? Like post-apocalyptic you know what I'm saying, Kiev or some shit right now? Like, yeah, shit like that. If you don't have access to any weight equipment or any weight training equipment at all, you just have a pull-up bar, there is a way to progress. Of course, you can just add repetitions and do RIR and all that stuff, and that's great. But if you get really, really good at pulling up to your chin, at some point you add in a new exercise, a new version of pull-ups. You may still do some pull-ups to the chin, 
But now, fresh, early in your workout, you may start to do pull-ups to the clavicles. If you have an ability to touch the bar to your clavicles on a pull-up, holy shit, you're strong. And then the number of pull-ups you can do to where the chin clears starts shooting up like crazy because this is so much harder. And then if you are able to do comfortable pauses at the top for 10 plus clavicle pull-ups, which makes you unbelievable at pull-ups, you can start doing sternum pull-ups, which are fucking insane. And that's when you touch the bar right to your nipple line. So think about your nipples real quick. Close your eyes. Think about your own juicy, giant nipples just bursting with whatever it is, nipples, burst, milk. That's what it is. And you think about touching them shits to the bar like that. Now, that's crazy. And if I see someone who can do 10 sternum pull-ups, when they turn around, the sun goes black because their back is so fucking big. And regular pull-ups, the chin clearing ones, oh my God, they can do like an infinity. So even if you don't have access to a lot of equipment, you can do these three variations. Do the harder ones first. Here's even a sample workout you could do if you're really fucking strong. Two to three sets of sternum pull-ups. Now you are more tired. Two to three sets of clavicle pull-ups. Now you're more tired. Two to three sets of pull-ups where you just barely clean the chin. Go home, heal up your lats, come back a few days later, repeat, tack on a rep to every set or a rep to every other set, something like that. You're well on your way. Next, number six, vary the pull-up styles. Yes, it is possible to just do overhand pull-ups for forever and experience no joint pain and experience no staleness to the movement, like you just feel the movements off for some reason, but it's unlikely. What is more likely is that for multiple months, you'll be able to really feel out one or two pull-up styles but then after you want to make a change. And that doesn't mean you have to get away from pull-ups because pull-ups are awesome in the sense there's so many varieties. There's wide grip, there's narrow grip, there's close grip, there's underhand, there's, what are these called, dildo attachments, parallel pull-ups or whatever, and kind of everything in between. What my recommendation is, is pick one or two of the styles, train them like crazy for a few months until they feel pretty stale, and then replace one or two, whichever one feels most stale, or if both of them stale, replace both, and go to another variant. So you could do, you know, a few months of training with overhand wide and underhand pull-ups, and then those get stale, you can switch to narrow and uh, dildo handle pull-ups. And then all of a sudden, double dildos, of course, come on now. So all of a sudden, you have awesome variation, but you're just still doing pull-ups. There's a huge general strength transfer. Like if you're able to do five more pull-ups than before with this style, you're going to be able to do very soon after starting this again, more pull-ups with that because it's almost the identical general musculature and so on and so forth. So switch the styles, go, go, go until you start to plateau, switch them up, go, go, go until you start to plateau. And that essentially injects variation into your training for all kind of perpetuity and you get stronger and stronger and stronger. And pretty soon, instead of the bar being pulled, pulling up your body, you pull the earth down. Yeah. Yeah. That's really the goal. Number seven, if you are in a position where you can only do like less than five pull-ups, that might put you into a little bit of a predicament because you're not able to summate enough training volume through pull-ups alone to meet your body's total ability to take volume and adapt to it and benefit. Like if you had a, and think about this, this works the same way with any other Situation is just pull-ups are curious because they're body weight. So here's what I mean. If you can do two pull-ups maximum and someone's like, okay, you can only train pull-ups as a first movement in your workout, go. What are you doing singles? A double first and then you're too tired to do that again the rest of the workouts. You do like three singles with two minutes rest and then assistance work. But like, gee whiz, that's a lot of like one RMs. It would be the same as if you're Max squat was 300 pounds, and the only squatting implement you had was a bar that's already in the rack, and it's chained in, and it's complete solid spheres that don't move, weighing 275 pounds total. So, yeah, you can train your squat, but only with your 2RM. Uh, okay, can I take the weight? Nope, can't take the weights off. That's the same logic that people who refuse to do assistance work as their core movement apply to the pull-up. I just do pull-ups. If someone that you knew had that 275 pound stapled rack situation, but they also had access to a free squat rack with actual weights you can slide on and off, a hack squat, a leg press, and so on and so forth, and you're watching them only do doubles and singles in that crazy rack and trying to get their squat up, you'd be like, 
you know, there's all these other machines here and you can do sets of five to 10 and do multiple sets instead of just a few. And you can summate tons of volume, great effort, great stimulus, grow tons more muscle, get way stronger, come back to that preloaded rack and hit sets of five. Just the same thing happens with pull-ups. So if you can do less than five or so pull-ups, I encourage you to do some, you know, maybe for some mesocycles that you train, you have workouts in which you just do, you know, mostly pull-ups to begin with, a few sets of triples or something, and then you do some other work. That's totally cool. But at other times of the week, what you could do is have a workout that begins with assisted pull-ups. And over time, you decrease the weight of the assistant. You'll work out that begins with pull downs. Workouts even that begin with rows because rows generally grow your back really well. Some of your workouts might even begin with bicep curls or hammer curls to get that part of you strong because it's going to contribute to your ability to do pull ups. Generally speaking, you put on the best size in sets of five to 30 reps. And if you can't do that in pull ups, stop just doing pull ups for size and do the exercise you can scale down to your strength and do those. And I promise, promise, promise that if you used to lap pull down 100 pounds and you could only do pull-ups for two reps, as you work up and eventually you can lap pull down same rep number for 130 or 140 or 150 pounds, you will be able to do more pull-ups, a lot more pull-ups versus just taking consistent 1RM attempts, not a good idea. What do you get when PhD sports scientists collaborate with pro bodybuilders? the most effective muscle growth training app ever made. Get yours now. Lastly, this is a huge, huge tip. It's kind of weird, it's out of left field, but I promise it makes sense. Lose weight. I mean, you specifically. That's right, you watching. No, 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 not the person behind you, not your cat, right? Not the adult films playing in the television screen, but who watches adult films on a TV screen? I wonder. In any case, here's the thing. It all depends on how much you want to be able to do more pull-ups. If you weigh 180 pounds and you're carrying some excess fat, no big deal. Everyone, you know, we all love you just the same. But if you, in your heart to be able to do more pull-ups and you say, look, I want to do what it takes to do more pull-ups, short of like, you know, killing somebody. Maybe even maiming them is okay. Losing five or 10 or even 20 pounds intelligently over the course of multiple weeks and months with maintenance phases and all that other stuff we talk about on the channel can take your ability to do pull-ups and skyrocket the living fuck out of it. Because the people who are the best at doing pull-ups in this world are all very tiny people because their strength to body weight ratio can be quite insane. Even people who win World's Strongest Man most of them can't even do but 10 pull-ups or so because they weigh three or 400 pounds. Now, that's a bit of an extreme case, but I promise even on the margins, there's a big difference. When I go, I just recently went from weighing about 250 pounds, and now I'm in the middle of a, a mini cut phase. I'm now weighing more like 240. My ability to do pull-ups is notably better notably better. Went from just doing pull-ups with my body weight to attaching 10 pounds and hitting PRs and all that crazy stuff. So if it really matters to you to do more pull-ups, maybe it's for a military physical fitness test coming up or something like that, losing weight while at the same time training your pull-ups in your back hard can allow you to improve your pull-up ability because it's kind of like taking that earlier example of the preloaded squat spheres or something, 275 pounds and sawing off part of it. Now it weighs 250. And you'll be able to squat it more, even if you're the same strength. But as you train and get a little bit stronger over time, if during that time you lose a little bit of weight over time, that separates those two lines quite clearly in a few weeks and definitely in a few months to where you're just being able to do way more pull-ups. Was that good, you guys? Is that a good enough video for you? If it wasn't, come back next week and we've got advanced pull-up periodization. Or I never made that lecture. And I'll either hastily make it and deliver it terribly, or you'll just uh, never hear this because Scott, the video guy, will edit it out. Or even funnier, if he just leaves it in and the next week you're checking and I, I disappointed you like I did my own son. Did you guys know I have a son? Yeah, it's an earlier marriage. And um, I just wasn't proud of it. And while I love him in theory, I just, I don't ever want to see his face. And I hope he doesn't see this because that would be fucked up to hear. I'll see you guys next time. Son. <laughs>